Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. In this video, I'm going to show you how I've set up this stream deck to control what key the pitch correction in our DAW uses in our live stream mix. This video is a quick bonus video to a series of videos I've been doing on how to mix your live stream audio in a DAW with an isolated mix from your front of house. If you want more information about how all of that is set up, be sure and go back and watch some of the previous videos in this series. I know the use of pitch correction, especially live, can be a contentious issue for some, so quickly let me give you my take on it. As a sound engineer mixing our band, I want to help our singers sound the best that they can. I'll use everything at my disposal to help them sound great. EQ, compression, reverb, room mics, all of these are tools to help them sound their best. And that's how I look at pitch correction. It's another tool we can use to help our very capable singers sound even better. Pitch correction isn't going to take a bad singer and make them sound good. But even the best vocalists have bad days. Here at our church, we have three services on a Sunday morning, and so to expect your singers to hit every note, every song, all morning long, even for most great singers, that's a lot to ask. And more so, when you are live streaming, you don't have the benefit of a studio recording where you can go back and retake a phrase. So pitch correction isn't a crutch that should be relied on to fix a problematic singer, but it can help remove distractions for people listening at home when someone happens to be a little off for a moment. Okay, enough about that. Let's get into how this is set up. I'm using the Wavestune real-time plugin for pitch correction, and I have that inserted as the very first plugin on each of my vocal channels. The challenge we're trying to solve here is that for pitch correction to really be effective and worth using, you have to set the key that the song is in in each of these plugins. If you have a lot of singers, it can be problematic to open up all the plugins, make that change, and realistically in the time we have between songs, sometimes it's really not even practical. And it's prone to error. One misclick and you're going to make things worse rather than better. So the solution that I came up with is to use a stream deck along with companion software that talks to Reaper and updates the key in all the plugins at the push of one button. I will say, you can just use Companion, which is free, and operate this through a browser without having to purchase the Stream Deck. The downside is you have to click away from Reaper and click into the browser to make that happen. So having the buttons that are just one push away is just really convenient. And along those lines, there are several different solutions to updating the plugins and changing their key that you could use, but I've found that having these buttons that are always gonna be visible sitting on the desk in front of my operator have just worked out the best for us. So I highly recommend this solution. To make this work, you need to go to the Companion website and download Companion. You'll need to create an account with your email address and then you'll be able to download Companion for free. Once you have that installed, we need to do a bit of configuration in Reaper. We need to create a way for our control inputs from Companion to get into Reaper to be able to control our plugins. In Reaper, go to the Options menu and to Preferences. Then on the left here, scroll all the way down to the bottom to Control OSC Web and click that. Now we'll click the Add button and for Control Surface Mode, select OSC. For the device name, I've called it Companion. For mode, select Configure Device IP plus Local Port. And these are the settings you need to enter for Device Port, Listen Port, and Device IP. This is for running Companion on the same computer as Reaper. Click OK, and that's all we need to do in Reaper to get our control commands coming in, other than obviously inserting our pitch correction plugins onto our vocal channels which I've already done. When you launch Companion, you'll be presented with this window. Click Launch GUI for us to do our setup, and then also for Companion to work, if you installed the Stream Deck software that came with it, you will need to shut that down. Stream Deck by itself has its own software where it can create buttons and do things on your computer. But for what we're doing, we wanna use Companion which is separate software that uses the Stream Deck hardware for our buttons, but lets us do some more powerful kind of programming behind the buttons. My implementation of this in Companion is a bit too complicated to walk through the entire setup. 
That would be a many hour long video to do that. So I've made my complete configuration available for you to download. Down in the description of this video, you can find a link to where you can purchase the Stream Deck and also where you can download my configuration file for free from my website. And on a side note, while I'm here at my website, I do want to remind you that I've been offering audio evaluations for your live stream audio. That's where I'll listen to your past few weeks of live streams, ask a bunch of questions about how you're mixing your stream, and then usually, especially if you're mixing in a DAW, we'll set up an hour session where I can remote into your computer and help you with some training and really help polish your mix. I've really enjoyed the interactions with a number of churches over the past few months, helping them take their live stream audio to the next level. So if that interests you and would be helpful to your church, there's a link to that down in the description of this video. Okay, back to configuring Companion. Once you've downloaded the configuration file, in the Companion GUI, go to the Import Export tab and click on Import and find the configuration file that you downloaded. You'll need to click this button, reset and load the new configuration. Once that's loaded, it will have set up your OSC connection to Reaper. It's gonna also create all your buttons and populate all the actions for your buttons. But to make this work for you on your computer, there are a couple things you'll have to edit. Unfortunately, this is a bit clunky. If someone knows a better way to implement some of these things in Companion, be sure and let me know down in the description of this video. But because of the way the OSC commands work in Companion with variables, what you have to do is go to the Variable tab and click Custom Variables, and then you'll have to edit a few things. The first is this Custom Track List. This needs to be a comma-separated list of the track numbers in Reaper that have a pitch correction plugin on them that you want to control. So for me, my vocals are on tracks 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So back here in Companion, those are the numbers I've entered. You need to enter the track numbers that you are using for your vocals in Reaper. Put that in for both the current value and startup value. Then the next thing you need to do is count how many tracks there are. So for me, that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Then for all the rest of these variable values, you have to have the number that is in there repeated that many times. And you need to take note of if there is a comma separating them or a space. So don't change the number that is there, just change the number of times it occurs. A bit tedious, but it's really just copying and pasting how many times you need it. And once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quick. So for instance, this first one, custom key param, has 13 five times separated by a comma. If you're only using three vocal channels, you'd only want 13 three times like this. Or let's say you had eight vocals, you'd need to have 13 repeated eight times like this. If I scroll down a ways here, you can see B flat, for instance, has 0.95 separated by a space now instead of a comma five times. Again, you'd repeat that number the appropriate number of times for the number of channels you have. Once you've updated all the variables, it's ready to go. You can update all your plugins with the push of a button. I also have an on and off button so you can turn the pitch correction completely off, say if someone is talking, just like you would with reverb. You don't wanna have that pitch correction on when someone's talking. If you're changing the number of vocalists you have a lot in your Reaper template, this implementation may be problematic. But for the most part, my template as far as the number of vocals I have doesn't change much. I always have those five slots for singers. Whether I'm using just two or three vocals on a Sunday, I always keep those five tracks as vocal tracks. If I have vocals, that's where they're gonna be. So once this configuration is set up in Companion, it's not really something I have to deal with configuring anymore. I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, bye.